H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. If you want to ensure that uh, the statement has to be executed for sure, put it inside finally block. Control X, put it inside finally block. So when you put inside this finally block, even if exception occurs, uh, after this catch block, this will be executed for sure. So let me run this. So so let me enter ABC. So I can see that only numbers are allowed. Hello, please close and open the application again. So that is the use of having finally block. So finally block, irrespective of the ex whether exception occurs or not, the statements inside finally block will be executed always. Will be executed f always. Will be executed even if exception occurs or exception doesn't occur. Okay, so so let let me quickly summarize on what we have discussed on exception handling. Okay, so all the statements wherever you think that. Uh, we might get some exception, we might get some error, please put them inside a try block and write a catch block. You can write your own catch blocks, for example, you can write a format exception or you can even catch overflow exception or you can write any exception. In case if you cannot predict that, predict all the exceptions, what might occur, you can add a general super exception which is, which is catch exception. So this will catch all the exceptions. And in case if you have other exceptions as well, you have to put this catch exception at the bottom of all the catches all the previous catches otherwise if you put this at the top this will catch all the exceptions so this so you will get an error and we have seen finally block the use of finally block is if you want to for sure if you want to give some messages for the user uh, you can actually put finally block and uh, when you run this the statements inside finally block will be executed irrespective of whether the exception occurs or not okay and one more thing we have something called format exception we have given here ex so why we declare ex is if you don't want to display your 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 messages and if you want to display dotnet frameworks inbuilt message okay in that case what you can do is you can delete it you can write ex dot message okay so for example for example please try entering smaller numbers instead of that if i want to see ex dot message okay so so here let me remove this and i can give here ex dot message so ex is it will display the user saying for example uh, let let me try to enter very large number and see what happens so let me run this and now i'm entering very large number see now the value is either too large or too small for in 32 so this is the message which dotnet framework guys have given so so in case if you want to display uh, the message given by dotnet framework you can actually use this ex variable so you can actually use ex dot message ex dot message but sometimes most of the times uh, most of the times we will not use this ex dot message we will only use use our own message because because sometimes customers might not know what is in 32 why should i so show this to uh, customers say for example if the customer enters like this why should I so show a message like this? In32 is too small, too large or something. So we don't want to show this type of message for the user. So user wants some um, some u very friendly messages. So in that case, uh, you cannot use the e you will not use this ex. You will write your own message saying like uh, value is too large. So you can write like this: value is too large. Try smaller numbers. Okay so this is how this is the use of this variable ex okay so if you want to display dotnet friendly messages you, you dotnet um, error messages which is uh, which is given in build by dotnet you need to use ex dot message or if you want to write your own message you need to write values i um, mean whatever message you want so so also if any exceptions occurs in one statement the i mean in any statement the statements below the statements uh 
ओके ओके सो आई एम गेटिंग ए मैसेज फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट सेइंग लाइक माय डिस्प्ले इज कमिंग वेरी लेट देन माय वॉइस सो हाउ अबाउट अदर्स आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड प्रॉपरली एंड एंड इज इट क्लियर so uh, tell me if it's clear okay you are seeing a delay is it okay so okay so my voice is coming first and then you're seeing the okay so but are you able to understand okay so how many of you got this concept okay okay so just a second just a second so i need to check my okay so let me check this in case if if the speed becomes slow right so then also this issue might come yeah i think there is some problem with my internet so how about voice um uh, okay okay so looks like there is some okay okay yeah so looks like there is some uh, problem with my internet speed today my internet speed is bit less okay so okay okay so what i'll do now is maybe maybe we'll i wanted to take for longer time i need to restart my modem but if i do that uh, there will not be anyone to make me as presenter okay so if i disconnect and join back right so uh, there should be someone from h2k who makes me as presenter so might be difficult okay so i'll do one thing so yeah i'll do one thing uh i'll make one of you as one of you as host and presenter so when i join back you have to make me as a uh, host and presenter again is that fine i'll be joining back in in within within 3 minutes i'll be joining back i'll just restart my modem uh that will actually restore the speed is that fine hello yeah so yeah okay so what i'll do is i'll i'll make uh, babita as presenter and uh, i'll make her as uh, host so in case if if i cannot join back within um let's take within 5 minutes um uh, so change role to i'm making presenter 
in case if i cannot join back 5 minutes so we will continue in the next class okay so i'm making her presenter just a second even that is taking lot of time making presenter so babita like you should not disconnect before i join otherwise like the cl the session will be ended okay so i made you as presenter and i'll change your role to host okay so now you are the host uh, so babita so what i'm doing now uh, i'm just disconnecting myself i'll be joining again so in case if you don't see me within 5 minutes uh, we will continue in the next class so is it fine for with all of you is it fine with all of you hello it's not so okay okay so so i'm i'm disconnecting myself so i'll be back within 5 minutes okay okay so now uh, now i think you will be seeing uh, th i mean you will be seeing the screen properly and also my voice and see now i just minimized visual studio so what you what you are seeing now hello yeah so so now now the speed is better i just open visual studio again okay now so i'll again mute all of you so okay okay so now let me quickly summarize on uh, why we need this exception handling and then um, yeah yeah let me quickly summarize on this exception handling so exception handling is used to catch the possible exceptions which might occur so that users will not see uh, any uh, any error messages or or users will not get annoyed by seeing like uh, uh, overflow exception or or users will not see any messages unnecessary messages so in that case you will add a try block all the statements wherever you can see the possible type of possible exceptions add that inside a try block and we'll add catch exception so we can catch different types of exceptions which we have and uh, exception ex is a super exception and uh, you can actually display display console dot write line inside this catch block you can display the exception whichever we have like for example uh, you can write your own exception values to large or, or, or try smaller numbers like this and if you want to use inbuilt message which is given by microsoft dot net so you can use this ex dot message so when you use ex dot message so for all the exceptions microsoft has given its own message so in case if you don't want to write this exception by yourself you can use that inbuilt message so if you want to use inbuilt message but the inbuilt messages are uh, are bit technical so you can only be, uh, that can be used by developers but not for the end customers okay so so for example for example um, if i run this okay so if i run this now now i am entering i am putting a breakpoint so let me put a breakpoint in this uh, in this all the three exceptions so i am just putting a breakpoint here for all the three exceptions now i'm 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 i'll enter a large value so let me run this and here i'm entering large value very large value and click on enter so now exception is occurred i mean it came here so when i move the mouse here when i move the mouse here i can see this ex message ex message so as a developer i can i can see that okay uh, the exception which i got is value is too large or too small so so developers can use this message ex message so that uh, so that they can actually understand about the exception so this is specially used when you are using some um, uh, when you want to understand what is the exception that that occurred okay so ex exception is the one which will show inbuilt message inbuilt uh, .net framework message for for this type of exception okay so most of the times uh, uh, we will not use ex dot message we will only use our own messages like value is too large or too small or only numbers are allowed so so we will not uh, we will not here for example see the message for format exception you will never understand if you if you see this so now see now if i run this if the customer enters abc here 
and press enter so you cannot understand this message input string was not in correct format so do you think customer will understand like input string was not in correct format means do you think customer will understand like okay i should enter integer by mistake i gave some some other string or something so user might not understand so in that case you need to give your own message instead of using dotnet frameworks inbuilt message okay so so here we need to give proper message saying like only numbers are allowed so now you understood what is the use of this ex exception ex this message if you want to use inbuilt exception message you have to use this exception or else or else you can leave it you can just give exception overflow exception you don't need to give that ex you can only put only till here okay uh, so here i'm using ex okay so this is about exception handling so so i think hope all the points are clear in this exception handling so now any questions in exception handling so i'm asking question what is the use of finally block what is the use of finally block hello what is the use of finally block I'm not seeing any response so what is the use of this finally block yeah yeah perfect so i got couple of responses i want to see the response from all of you so the use of this finally block is yeah yeah irrespective of the exception irrespective of the exception if you want to ensure this every time then we use finally block finally block okay so 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 this is about exceptions so which is super exception which is super exception yeah so exception only exception this is super exception so always you need to ensure that super exception should be there at the end okay yeah super exception will catch all the exceptions so i'll i'll tell you one example so i went to one exam uh, i went to one exam a uh, .net exam where they have given like this okay and then and then you will you will not see this red lines and all so it will be there in notepad for example the code is like this okay so especially like if you do any microsoft certification for c sharp or something you will see some type of code like this what is the output of below code or something like this so you will see code like this and for all the lines they will give line numbers okay and they will ask you which line do you think what is the output of this program <coughs> sorry so they will ask you what is the output of this program so all um, i mean they will tell you one simple scenario as well they will tell you i enter a value as 5 i enter b value as 0 so what is the uh, output for this the first option will be um okay they will have added one more one more here okay so the first option will be here let me give here okay now question to all of you i I'll, i'll give this code to all of you and then i'll 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 also tell user will enter so here user will enter uh a as 5 and b as 0 so what is the output for this program so this like this you will get a question so what is answer for this so is it some exception occurred or is it only numbers are allowed or is it value is too large or try smaller numbers or is it none of this so first option will be some some exception occurred and second option will be only numbers are allowed and third option will be value is too large or too small and fourth option will be none of this So what is output for this program all of you uh, enter your choice enter your choice only choice okay so enter your answer i need the answer from all of you i need your response 
yeah so yeah so from okay so for those who answered one can you now realize like what is the flow of this exceptions which is there at the top exception what type of exception is there at the top super exception so what do you think if i compile this what will happen if i compile this code if i compile this code do you think that will generate exe that will not generate exe if i compile this code i will get error i will get error see for example if i have this code so so i'll get error saying like there is super exception which catches all the exception so so what is the answer now what is the answer now all of you please try to understand um answer now is none of this the answer is 4 but but i answered some exception occurred because that time i'm not sure that even i felt like uh since this is not format exception this are not overflow exception this exception will be caught and i thought like uh, this will print some exception occurred but that is not correct so when you have this catch exception ex at the top when you compile this code this will not compile your dotted framework compiler will not compile it it will throw compilation error it will compile it but it will not it will not create an exe because it will throw compilation error because this catch exception ex should be at the should be at the end okay so please uh when you are answering please be very careful because the questions will be in a way that you it will confuse you and you will come out saying like the paper is so easy but you will see the result you are not selected so so even even i felt for a couple of times like that so so i got a question saying like then for any program with super exception or produce exe no it's not like that when you get any compilation error that will not produce an exe so if you put this at the bottom so if you put this at the bottom of exception then it is correct okay so the reason why this is this has to be at the bottom because there is no point of having these exceptions when this exception is catching all the exceptions okay so so in that case you need to put this at the bottom in case you need to put it at the bottom or you need to remove these exceptions either put this super exception at the bottom or remove this remove this sub exceptions only have the super exceptions now what happens yeah yeah when you and when you add this super exception at the top it will not produce an exe so for example see now i got a question saying like when you add this at the top do you think that will not produce exe yes it will not produce when you get a compilation error it will not produce an exe for example let me save it and let me open containing folder and go to this folder bin folder debug folder let me delete this exe okay so now let me rebuild it so so let me rebuild the solution right click on this rebuild so now i'm getting an error a previous catch clause so what is the error i'm getting so this is perfect ex error what i'm getting so for these two exceptions i'm getting here a previous catch clause already catches all exceptions of this type or super type so no point of having these two because already an exception is catching all this so remove this or put that catch exception at the bottom so that is the exception which i'm getting so now right click on this open containing folder go to bin folder debug folder i'm not seeing exe i'm not e i'm not seeing that console application 48.exe because if any exception occurs or if i see any i mean if any error occurs compilation error this is a compilation error so where when any compilation error occurs it will not generate exe so what you need to do now you need to correct the error either move this to the bottom or 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 remove these two okay so so let me let me move this to the bottom and now rebuild it now rebuild succeeded now i can go to go to open containing folder i can go to bin folder i can see the exe file now you understood so now all of you without error without so now what is the answer for this when i have this exception at the top i have this exception ex at the top what is the answer now yeah yeah so the answer is 4 not 1 the answer is 4 because because this will throw compilation error now if i have like this now what is the answer now you are right so this is not format exception this is not overflow exception 
So this will actually um, go to exception EX and sh show you some exception occurred. So please be very cautious while giving any exam. So please try to analyze the code and then understand it. So so always ensure that your exception EX should be there at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is about exception handling. So any questions about exception handling or is it very clear or is it clear? So how do you rate yourself, your understanding in exception handling from one to five? Five being very clear. Okay. So, so this is about uh, exception handling. Now, shall we continue or we'll stop here? So I got a message, I got a question saying like, uh, okay. So uh, I will explain, uh, I got a question saying like, can you explain what is the difference between compile time error and runtime error? Okay. And uh, I got another question saying like, uh, if divide by zero exception is there, so it will show that message. Okay. Now, if divide by zero is there, okay. See here, if divide by zero is there, what happens? It will go to where? It will go to which section if I get divide by zero exception? it will go to super exception because it is not format exception it is not overflow exception so it will go to here and it will put ex dot message so we don't know what is the dotnet framework inbuilt message so let's try to see what is dotnet framework message for divide by zero let me run this let me run this and try to enter six and zero see now attempted to divide by zero yeah this is giving very user friendly message ex dot message is showing very user friendly message Attempt attempted to divide by zero hello please close the application and open again this is very good right so yeah so is this your question um, uh, Babita yeah so so this is about divide by zero exception no, yeah yeah so it will show up that one right correct correct it will not show the super exception that time so for example if I write catch here and if I write divide by zero exception and if I write here, for example, uh, console dot write line, and if I write here uh, here like uh, you uh, denominator cannot be zero. So in this case, in this case, if I run this, it will not go to exception. Okay, I need to put semicolon here. So let me run this now. So enter first number six, enter second number zero. See now, it's coming denominator cannot be zero. So it is not going to super exception because because already uh, at already this exception has been caught. Divide by zero exception. Okay. Only in case if any exception occurs other than other than these uh, these three exceptions, then only it will go to super exception. Okay. Is this your question, Babita? Yes. yes thanks. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, I got one more question saying like, can you please explain compile time error and runtime error? Okay, so I'll explain compile time error and runtime error. Okay, now uh, let's take one example where I'm I'm actually forgetting put a, to put a semicolon. Okay, so I forget to put a semicolon. Now now if I try to compile this, if I try to compile uh, compile this, so I'm getting an error saying semicolon is missing. So th this is called compilation error. So when I compile the code, if I see any error, that is called compilation error. C compilation error. Okay. Now I will. So just when you compile, if you see any error, that is called compilation error. So now I will. I'll tell you what is um, what is runtime error. So runtime error is something like when we execute the code in compile time, we will not get the error. Only when execution, we'll get the error. Say for example. Uh, okay say for example here instead of 2 in 32 I am um, okay as good as this for example let me let me remove these exceptions all the exceptions okay so let me comment out this and also let me comment out this try block okay so now if I try to enter, uh, say for example, now if I try to enter 0 for zero for B. Now for example, I am running this. 
now I enter first number 6, I enter second number 0 now I will get some error or I will get some exception this is called runtime error, see now this is called runtime error so compile time errors are something which occurs when you compile the code and runtime errors are something which, which, which occurs when you execute the code so to overcome runtime errors you have to write your code uh, with all the exceptions you have to catch all the exceptions then you will minimize your runtime errors okay so is it clear now Sandhya what is the difference between compile time error and runtime error yeah okay so so any other questions you have okay so so today yeah but but there is nothing to confuse so okay so compilation error is blindly you can think when you compile something if you get any error that is called compile time error okay so for example uh, anything anything for example uh, for example instead of putting a by b equal to c or anything for example if i forget to declare c if i forget to declare variable c now if i try to compile it i'll i'll get an error as simple as that so this is a compile time error c does not exist in the current context so this is a compilation error okay so so that is the difference between compile time error and runtime error okay yeah now can we compile all exceptions and write as one can we compile um, in that case if you want to in that case we can uh, I mean uh, we can only I got another question saying like can we compile all the exceptions and write as one so in that case you can use uh, super exception if you want only one exception instead of all these exceptions okay so not sure is this a question so okay so Padmini can you explain your question you can unmute yourself but, uh, yeah yeah I was just thinking like uh, have this overflow and uh, divide by zero and all those things I just write a uh, catch one single catch and use the object uh, exception dot overflow or uh, divide okay using if and or all those things and then oh, okay and, uh, okay I got it something like that yeah something like that okay okay I got your question so yeah let me mute you yeah so I got the question so what is uh, she saying is okay so what I can do here is I can remove all these things so let me comment out all these things and uh, what she is telling is in this actually we can write like this so so we can write exception so switch someone is supposed to explain switch today right who is that yeah we can do that uh, we can do that uh, Parimala so how we need to do is if ex dot ex exception is um, first say for example divide by zero exception so you can write here saying like this is of uh, console dot write line second number okay so something like this you can write so let's run this and see whether we'll, we'll get this or not so let me rebuild it okay so I'll enter uh, I will enter divide by zero exception so let's see whether second number cannot be zero will come or not so let me run this I'm entering 6 and 0 sorry I should have entered press enter so run this I'll tell you what is this ease operator and all for now don't worry so 9 and 0 so second number cannot be 0 so this is how you can write a if condition if this exception is divided by 0 exception or or you can write here else if ex is overflow exception you can actually write here console dot write line you can write here uh, number is too large 
and uh, and like this you can actually write uh, uh, for example if you write here else else if ex is uh, what is the other one format exception format exception you can write here console dot write line only numbers are allowed okay so and you can write here else so instead of this console dot write line message you can actually write here else okay so i'll tell you what is this ease operator later but uh, but yes yes as uh, okay so i think i think doing this is more efficient because here you need to check for if else if else if else if like this so imagine um, imagine if the exception which you are getting is the last one so if you have catch catch block directly you go to exception okay so normally uh, this way is better writing like this is better than writing if else if else if else like this okay okay so any other questions So, all of you, uh, any questions? Like, um, so if you don't have questions, like we can stop here. So. H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.